Well, hey there. I am here with a guy that I've known his name for quite a while, but we're just meeting uh, a new friend, Chandler Bolt. So Chandler, thanks for, for coming on and hanging out with me for a little bit. Yeah, Keith, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So give us the 60 second. For those of those who are watching this who don't know uh, you or, or who you are, give us the 60 second background on Chandler Bolt. Yeah. So I grew up in the country uh, in South Carolina in the church. Uh, and my parent, my, like my dad was a deacon at the church uh, and all that stuff. Um, a lot of your audience um, will probably know my brother's band uh, called Need to Breathe. Yeah. Um, they cool. sing Testify, Slumber, um, Washed by the Water, a bunch of, you know, they go into a studio. He's got like just a, a ton of devil words like in the studio, which is super cool. Um, they've got a, they've gotten a ton of those over the years. Um, as well as like, you know, I'm, I'm a C-level English student and a college dropout. Uh, and I went on to start a company um, that teaches people how to write and publish their first books. Because books, have, books, writing a book and books in general, have, it's completely changed my life. Uh, and so uh, that, that was my way to kind of carve my own path and to be fulfilled uh, in doing something that I wanted to do. My brother kind of paved the way uh, yeah. and said, hey, you can literally do whatever you want to do. People told me I was an idiot for doing music. Uh, and people discouraged it and said, hey, when are you going to get a real job? Uh, and, and so he kind of motivated me, uh, to, to, to carve my own path. And then, uh, with self-publishing school, we've helped thousands of people, uh, on their journey to writing and publishing their first book. So it's kind of come full circle, uh, from a C-level English student and a college dropout to like, books are like a huge part of my life. I got a big yeah. stack of books <laughs> right here. Uh, and I've gotten, uh, six best-selling books. Um, the most recent one, which is published, um, this yeah. is my brand new book. And so, uh, that, yeah, that's, that's kind of like the 60 second version. Sweet, sweet. So you mentioned that, that your actual business is called Self Publishing School, and you know anybody that's watching this is probably familiar with me, and so they know my journey of having a couple traditionally published books, one of which came from a self published background, and then also four other self published books. And so they know that I'm I'm a huge believer and fan of of writing as well as self publishing. And so tell us what what is self-publishing school and kind of why'd you why'd you start it and what's your hope for it yeah so self-publishing school it's an online education company it's a training program right we teach people to write and publish their first book in 90 days okay now my mission with this company is really to do um for folks like you keith and folks like me like when we wrote our first book it's like you just look at a couple blog posts or you email somebody like you keith is like how do I do this? Right. Uh, and it's like the, the information that you find is, is not very good. It's pretty confusing. So my goal is to empower people uh, to help them actually write their book because a lot of people are scared to even start. There's a New York Times study that says 81% uh, of people want to write a book, um, but we know from the stats that less than 1% of people actually do. Uh, so my mission is to kind of uh, kill that gap uh, because when people think about a book, they think it's complicated, they think it's hard, uh, and they think it takes a long time. Uh, and uh, I mean, you, me, none of us have like a bunch of time sitting on our hands. So they're like, okay, I'll do it someday. Right. And someday never comes. Uh, right. And then, and, and like in the instance of some people, like they die with that message inside of them, um, which um, is just not acceptable for me. Uh, so that's why I, I built the companies like to help, uh, help unlock that book for people uh, and show them the way. Because as a C-level English student uh, and as someone who's like, you know, I, I wasn't born super smart or like uh, the top performer in my class. I know the value of taking something complicated like writing a book and making it very, very, very simple. Oh, and I, I mean, now you're speaking my language and my other than my ministry side, I do some corporate coaching and communication. And one of the things I tell my clients all the time is keep it simple because simple gets applied and complicated gets set aside. Mm, that's a great. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely. I mean, now you're I mean, you're hitting on all cylinders with with nine. We didn't. And for anybody watching this, we didn't plan that. Uh, <laughs> that's Softball. absolutely absolutely it. So so some people that are are watching this are thinking in terms of of book and man, that's absolutely right. That resonates with me. I want to write my family history or the story of my grandfather or just something passionate I'm a, that I'm passionate about that I want to get out there. And the, the idea of self-publishing makes sense for somebody who's always wanted to write a book that's in that 81%. But a big chunk of my audience is also people who 
work at churches or run ministries or where they may be giving talks, they may be writing sermons, they might be doing something for their students or children or writing things for families if they're children's pastors. There's kind of a wide swath of people in ministry. How could um, self-publishing really equip them to get their message out? I've got some ideas on that, but this is your wheelhouse, so. Yeah, so the great news um, for most of your folks is that you've already done the hard work, right? right? How many other people do you know that are normal people that have to prov- like create a full sermon series or even just a message to speak about for an hour? Like right. if you give that to the average person, and I'm sure this is probably similar for you, Keith, right? And probably most of your listeners uh, as, as well as like, that first sermon, think about it back to that. It's like probably a nightmare, right? Like you're sweating, you, you have all these notes and like now it's second nature. So content creation uh, as a unit, as a vehicle uh, has become second nature. And the important thing to remember is that is not normal. Uh, like you, you are now in the 1% in doing that. And so in, in having that ability, writing a book will probably be one of the easiest things that you've ever done. Um, because you had to go through that process of distilling the information down into sermons, which is the same part process that most people have to do when they distill information down into a book. It's just that the difference between you and them is they're doing it for the first time when they're writing their book, which right. is what makes it really hard. Um, so that's where I think there's a unique opportunity for your folks, uh, Keith, uh, to not only like, you know, it, it put, put something into a book. Uh, and put their sermon series or whatever that might be into a book. But like, I don't know about you, but when I held this thing in my hands, it was like, uh, you know, the the words that I'm saying right now and that are flying around the internet, um, that that will be gone, right? And and I can't see that lasting past me on this planet. But this thing, this could go to like a Goodwill or this could be in someone's attic or this <laughs> could, you know, like this thing will be on this earth after I'm gone. Um, which I think for your your audience might really resonate is like it, it is timeless. Um, it's a way to not only like pass things down to your kids, but pass uh, pass things on beyond your congregation. Uh, it's a vehicle um, that really not only amplifies what you're doing uh, and amplifies the message that you're already getting up and speaking on Sunday, uh, mm-hmm. but it does it in a way that like some people will come to church, some people won't. Like, and the good thing is you can read a book outside of church. Right. But oftentimes the sermon won't leave the church doors unless you're given like cassettes, CDs. Um, I don't know why I said cassettes, but that, CDs. Wow. Are you <laughs> old enough to say that word, Chandler? I don't think so. But <laughs> streaming, you know, whatever. This gives you a vehicle for people who, you know, they might not come to your church website. They might not come in your church doors, um, but it, it, it just amplifies everything that you're doing. Totally. Totally. And I mean, you, you, you hit on something that when you said the, The sermon might not last past that when somebody leaves the doors. And I think the more that I think of people in ministry, how they could use self-publishing is to so many people are preaching sermons, but then they've got small groups and youth groups and children's ministry and families that they're trying to equip with questions and and whatever. And to to self-publish a study guide that goes along with their 12 week series on the book of Ephesians. It's absolutely nowhere near as difficult as people think. And, oh, that, gosh, and that's yes. what I love about what, what you're doing is you've you've taken the the hard, well, it's not even hard, the imagination of how hard it is and put it into do this, do this, do this. This is what yeah. it takes to do it. And so I think a lot of that, that 81% goes down to 1% because people imagine that it's more difficult and more time consuming and more costly than it really is. I completely agree. And just, but I, I know you're about to ask another question, but I just want to give something uh, very tangible uh, for people who might be thinking this doesn't apply to me. Uh, so this is like a great, such a timely example. So like two hours from now, um, from the time that we're recording this interview, yeah. um, I'm going to my, my small group for my church, right? Uh, and we're doing this series that they're calling it uh, Summer on the Mount. So it's like uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount and breaking it down into a bunch of different things, right? Uh, and now I'm thinking for my church, it's like, okay, that's a very clever, uh, that's a very clever thing, right? Summer on the Mount. Now that could be a summer prayer series. That could be a summer what devotional, whatever. And then that gets packaged as a book. Cause you're already doing the hard work. Like they have the, they have the things that they send to all the small groups so that we're all on the same page and like the documents, the pages, the questions, the prompts, like 
it's literally a book uh, right. just chunked up into a bunch of different PDFs that they send out every single week. Right. Uh, right. And so just like most of your folks, Keith, they're probably doing this already is like you can repackage that and you're not, not even repackage it. You just combine it uh, into a book. Uh, and that's something that, you know, it not only like spreads the message, but it, it will live beyond the time period right. that you're doing this message for. Because I'm thinking like, OK, what are these people going? What's my church going to do with this Summer on the Mount se series three years from now. Are they going to do it again? Probably not. Cause that's not cool. Right. right. Uh, you know, it's like, Oh, we already did that. But what about the people who aren't in the church who haven't done that? Right. Uh, so it just kind of, it cements that as well as allows like, say me, if I'm really enjoying this and we meet on the street, Keith, I'm like, ah, this is, this is a great series. Like here's the book and you can do it too. Right. Uh, which it also kind of enables this, um, this gospel sharing tool um, that I would, that like I currently don't have. Uh, e even though I am in a small group and I am going through the same lessons. So that's hopefully that's like a very concrete example for people. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the 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 reality is, is that in many situations, especially when you're just creating a study guide or something, you're creating something that's 40 pages, 70 pages, something like that. It can frequently be cheaper to print a self-published book and have it delivered to your church, you know, get 100 of them or whatever than it would be to actually go down to Kinko's and photocopy off the PDFs. I mean, <laughs> dang, yes, yeah. this whole folder of PDFs and we're photocopying, you're taking the time to that, or you upload the book and you have somebody else print it, somebody else package it, somebody else <laughs> collate it, bind it and send it to you. And, and I just think for many, many churches, they're throwing money at, Kinkos or or whatever their own copy machine if they're doing that that if they put it into creating a book they've got something that will last that actually will save them money as well so yeah completely agree so all right so you know as we kind of wrap wrap this up how can people connect with this if, if people are interested in just even finding out more I know you've you've got a site you've got a webinar you've got training some of it's free you could how, how can people experience this and take the next step? Totally. So um, the best uh, path forward, if you want to check this out and learn, even just learn more about like, okay, is this something that's a fit for me? And kind of like, what are the first steps? Mm -hmm. um, I've put together some training. Um, it's it, it's uh, about an hour where I teach like, okay, here's how you mind map your book. Here's how you outline it. Here's how you write it, market it, all that stuff. Um, so it's all free. Um, all you have to do is um, I, I partner with Keith on this. So we're all you have to do is go to keithferrin.com forward slash publish uh, and you can go there. That's free. Obviously, if you ever want to work with me or, you know, use self-publishing school to do your book, that's cool, too. Uh, but even if you don't like uh, I'd love for you to just go here and check this out uh, and just just kind of see um, that it's way easier than you think. Uh, and this is like, this is a personal mission for me. Uh, it's making this process easy for people. Um, so to be honest, you know, it doesn't much, it doesn't much make a difference to me whether you sign up for self-publishing school or not, uh, as long as you have the tools um, to go and do this, um, because uh, this is something that's obviously close to my heart, as well as like, I teach a lot of people, but this particularly is like growing up in church uh, and, and, and being a Christian. And, and this is something that's important to me. I know that when your people uh, implement this stuff, Keith. It's like it's spreading the gospel, right? Which is um, which. There's no mission uh, greater than that, and there's right. no other uh, people that I could work with in my business that would have that kind of impact. Um, so that's why I'm really passionate about this. So uh, just one more time, the the link is keithfarron.com uh, forward slash publish, and we'll have that linked up with this. Sweet, sweet. Well, thank you so much, man. And, uh, and in, in our talking before and, and seeing some of the things on your site, you're, you're, the idea of somebody being able to take a sermon series or an idea or a passion for a book and go, I know one of your phrases is blank page to published book in 90 days. And that, that idea that, that there are some people that just don't believe that's possible. And not, not only is it possible, it's, simpler than it has ever been before. Yeah. And so, so I, I mean, man, I, I really hope that a lot of people that even just want to see if it could be something they could integrate in their church would check out, check out your free training. So keithfarron.com slash publish. Thanks so much, Chandler. Uh, great talking with you. I look forward to, to hang out next time. Next time I'm in the, in the Bay area, as long as uh, we can talk about 
you know, Seahawks and 49ers without <laughs> beating each other up, um, then uh, coffee's on me, man. Awesome. Thank you, Keith. All right. Thanks, Chandler.